Hello there, and welcome to my new tutorial about animals, livestock, and the meat industry in Dwarf Fortress. This video will cover everything you need to know around the topics of pastures, cage, holding of animals, slaughtering, and what to do with those animal products and how to pull it off. We're not going to talk about animal training, animal taming, animal cages, and all those things. These will be handled in our own video. So, first of all, let's give you an overview of where to see your animals. You find your animals here in the Pets and Livestock screen. You see how they, uh, how they are named, their gender, if they are domesticated or not, if they are or in, uh, currently a pet of somebody. And the most important buttons are here. This designates the animal for butchering. This designates the animal to be adopted by a dwarf as a pet. And this one designates it for gelding, so it cannot reproduce anymore. So these are the basics. To give your animals a spot to be at, you have the pen and pasture zone. You just draw it down and then you can assign the animals to where they're supposed to be marked by that little green check mark here. And once that's done, somebody will carry the animal to the pasture zone and then they'll try to do their best to survive there. So for a pasture zone to work out, it has to have anything to graze on and uh, enough room for all the animals. This here is a uh, catastrophically undersized pasture for all those animals that I have there. So to know how many spaces every animal needs, I have put a link into the description box linking to the Dwarf Fortress Wikipedia, which will show you how much pasture space you will need to designate to your animals. But this is basically how you store your animals. That's the basics. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about when we're talking about storing animals before we get into the whole processing chain are cages. So one of what dwarfs stats on one, you can set up a cage. Cages are made at the smithy or at the carpenter's workshop if made out of uh, wood, but I'd strongly recommend you iron or any other solid material. So you can put the animals inside the cage by clicking this button, and then you designate which animals should be in there. So let's uh, say these, and then somebody will come and hold them in there. Cage holding of animals has several advantages. The most obvious one, they don't need to eat. Yeah, that's the crazy part, but they don't need to be fed at all. Also, cages are endless. You can put in as many animals as you want to in one cage. And the next part is animals grow up inside a cage. So these, uh, th these baby uh, yak uh, animals there, they will ultimately grow up there and be ready for processing. The only thing they won't do inside there is getting pregnant, but they will give birth to animals if they were pregnant when put into the cage. So you can use cages to clear out your areas, because there's one thing that's really a little bit problematic about uh, animals in general. Whenever your animals give birth to their uh, children, they these children will stick near to the parents. The parents will eat the stuff from the from the ground, and quite often, even if the pasture is large enough, the children will starve because they try to eat the grass from their parents' field, and that just doesn't work. So what you can do here as a uh, as a band aid, as you saw there, I I just put up all these uh, animals inside there, the baby animals, and then they will be all put inside the cages where they can grow safely without needing any food. This way you can just keep your breeding pairs on the pasture and that's that. The next thing that I want to introduce is underground pastures. So up above ground pasturing animals are dangerous because uh, there's uh, always the raid uh, thingies and you dwarfs don't like to be above ground, all those things. You can though set up pasture underground as soon as you have some floor fungus going on. Floor fungus hatches as soon as you have struck the cavern layers. I'm browsing downstairs right now to give you an impression. So the caverns, as soon as you have opened your, uh, your mind to that. Where is it? Here. So as soon as you have breached the first layer of the caverns, floor fungus will grow all over the place. And funny enough, that stuff can be used to feed your animals. 
Floor fungus will grow everywhere where there is farmable so uh, soil. So it won't grow here on the cavern floor, but it will grow here on these uh, tiles, which can be used for underground farming. You can, of course, also force the growth of uh, that fungus by irrigation. So as you see here, that irrigated patch here is already spreading out the floor fungus. This way, you can put your pastures underground. Two things are important, though. If you want to do that, Put those pastures somewhere where your dwarfs don't walk along every day because that stuff can get trampled down and make sure that the fungus is fully grown before you let the animals loose on it because the fungus does not really show you it but uh, here there's dense floor fungus there's sparse floor fungus so it, it comes in different densities and if you send your animals too early there they will eat it all up. All right, but that's an all I wanted to say about pastures. Let's get to the processing. So when we butcher an animal, we designate it for butchering, like here. So let's say we want to butcher one of our stray yak cow. Then the next thing that happens is one of your dwarfs designates that job, takes the animal to the closest butcher shop. Let's hope it'll happen any moment too soon and then it will get immediately processed there. Here's one difference. When the animal gets butchered at the butcher's shop as a livestock animal, it gets immediately processed into its parts here. And when you have something like a uh, carcass from a hunter or something like that, it has to be transported first there. Here's a catch. These butcher shops, when they scan for butcher an animal, they don't have the highest range. So if you want to be sure that all the stuff that dies outside there gets properly butchered, you can put up to your underground butcher shops, like uh, the one down here. So you would put up a uh, storage zone in between, let's put it down here as an example, where corpses go. So corpses and maybe also the refuse go right there to right next to your uh, butcher's shop this way your butcher will be able to get the carcasses quickly where he needs them to and he's going to be able to unload his items where he also needs them to get unloaded at so that's really important also if you ever have a huge raid of animals that you want to process by all means set up more butcher's shops or more tanner's shops until everything is over because Corpses and everything in here rot quite quickly and therefore have a little bit of uh, shops too many. That really helps. Also, we're going to talk now about what co came out of the animal. So every animal drops quite comparable things. So it, out of every animal, you will receive a skull or more skulls if it has more heads. The skulls can only be processed into totems so far. Then we have the meat, which can be processed properly into food. We have horn and bone, which gets processed at the craft dwarf shop. We have skin, which can be processed into leather or parchment. If you want to make parchment, make sure that you don't tan all your hides away directly. You will need milk of lime though, which is made out of limestone. So where were we? So skin. Then we got brain and uh, uh, brain can be processed into food. Nervous tissue is right now not really used for anything as far as I know. Hair can be spun into thread, but uh, not always can it be made into cloth but you can use it for the suturing of wounds. So kidneys, spleens, and sweet bread, and tripe, and liver, that, that's all food stuff. That This will all, all get processed at, uh, at your farmers and uh, at your kitchen. And uh, here goes fat. Fat is also worth mentioning, but before we get there, quick talk about the hoof. The hoofs also are processed the craft dwarf workshop as horn. Everything made of horn is, is also hoof. So that's that. And fat can be rendered into tallow at the kitchen, which is really, really a very, very important thing. So there we go here. Unrotten fat into uh, globs. And this is uh, a important product for your soap making industry. But what's really important if you want to uh, make sure that you always have something for the kitchen, uh, for the soap maker. Make sure you forbid some items to be uh, cooked with. So the tallow is also a cooking ingredient. And when your meat industry is just starting on out, 
you might want to reserve that for the soap makers first. So after the butchering is ha has happened, you can then assign the tanning of the hide. I strongly implore you to process all these items ASAP because everything there is uh, now time sensitive and therefore have your uh, meat and uh, food production all together at one uh, at one block it really will make things easier and happier for you so i also wanted to show you here the farmer's workshop is important here for all these things too because at the farmer's workshop you can extract secondary products i'm going to cover that in a second a little bit more closely but you also need this to geld animals here and you can also shear your animals here and uh, like i said milk them so secondary products for second there are three different secondary products that you can get out of your animals milk which requires button a bucket and the farmer's workshop if the animal is milkable your uh, dwarfs will do so if you set up a uh, step a uh, work order for these so here i have these work orders here milk animal and I configured it in a way that it gets just checked daily. If there's any an milkable animal, my dudes will do so. And the same I did for shearing animals. You can't configure it more closely, but you can configure it as a uh, daily checked thing. So every day my people will check on out if they can make something there. And uh, yeah, hide tanning goes for the same thing here. So that's that. Now, to get eggs out of your chicken there is a requirement and that's the nest boxes so nest boxes you need to make them at a workshop first of course and when you put them down your animal your, your birds inside the pasture will claim them and then they will lay a clutch of eggs in there beware about if you don't want to reproduce the, uh, if you want don't want them to reproduce, so keep them keep the male uh, chicken away and uh, keep the female chicken uh, together for eatable eggs. If you want to reproduce your animals, you know you have to put them together. So I think we covered pretty much everything except for the bees, but the bees will be their own topic. And um, yeah. With these things, you have pretty much all the tools at hand to make your own pasture paradise happen. Here are a couple of thoughts. It's really paying off to uh, not have your animals here like I do it. Instead, bring up a little bit of a system where you can bring up your breeding pair on a safe pasture and store the offspring somewhere where you can then process them. This uh, cage holding is amazing to have storages whenever you need them. And uh, another worthwhile thing to know, you cannot have more than 50 of each animal per map. After that, they will stop breeding. And yeah, I think that covers up pretty much everything I wanted to say about that topic. So your, your meat industry will give you food, stuff to make uh, things at the Crafts Dwarfs Workshop via bone and, uh, and horn. You will receive hides that you can transform into leather for your clothier or into parchment for your libraries. And last but not least, you will receive fat, which can be either eaten or transformed into soap. When you want to kickstart your soap um, production, just make sure that the tallow is not on the uh, allowed list of things that can be cooked away. All right, that ends it. I thank you so much for watching and leave me a comment if you might want to add, an, add in anything or if you want to ask something, I'm all ears. So leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. There's daily content coming up from my side. And if you like that, chances are you like the other stuff as well. And there's also a link to the other videos uh, of this tutorial playlist down there. And of course, a big shout out to all the supporters of this channel. I deeply appreciate. If you want to join the supporters, there are a couple of links down there to Patreon, Paypal, and buy me a coffee. And if you cannot afford or anything like that, don't fret. Watching this video to this very moment means a terrible lot to me and supports me as well. So, have a wonderful day, enjoy gaming, and see you soon.